Garth Tander and um, poor old uh, Larkham. So, uh, well up, yeah, that looks like a tap to me. Now you see, no, 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 John Bowe's got touched up the back from Garth Tander by the looks of it. And uh, poor old Mark Larkham was the innocent party there. It was there. a chain reaction, wasn't it? Yeah. Here's our leading duo, though, Mark Scaife. Now he won race one here at Phillip Island last year and he's well on the way to doing that again. His teammate Craig Lowndes sitting in second position. This is the way it's been ever since lap one. Faulkner, Ingalls, Seaton, they're still your top five. Our Pulsiter has lost four spots. You see the dry line through, well the drying line through. This is what happened to Larry Perkins. He came through there, just got the rear just off the dry line onto the wet and it was the end of the story. Outstanding run from John Faulkner up there in third position. But the Mobile Holden Racing Team doing what we expected them to do here. The home test track, they're the only team that ran here on a full test day with this new surface. Well, that was in dry conditions, so they're showing their technical superiority when the rain comes down as well. But John Faulkner, some seven seconds behind them, and they're really playing with this field. The Mobile Holden Racing Team, look at the gap, seven seconds. Eight laps completed. Faulkner doing an outstanding job in third position. And he has found his feet this year. Mark oh, Larkham staying out there, though, with all that grass and the front sport. A little bit of a touch there. It's one of the Tratt. It's a couple of the two new AUs there, Mark. Anthony Tratt in the toll AU, and just behind him, the K&J Thermal Products AU of uh, Paul Wheel. It's Mark Larkham, who was the big loser in that incident a lap ago at Honda Corner. You see the grass is still in there, trying desperately to make his way back. He's lost a lot of positions. In fact, he's well back. He's in 17th position. That's going to make it so hot because one of the ducks is completely, uh, completely closed up. Stone Brothers Racing Ford. He's been very fast here all weekend, but uh, look at that. He's been black flagged, so the officials, whether they want to bring him in for the damaged body work or for some other misdemeanor, we'll find out. But he's been very fast here all weekend, young Steve. Struggling to find sponsorship for his car. We didn't hear any more about Lounsey jump on the star, did we? It was something that was heard and then it all sort of disappeared. It's good to see Stephen back too, isn't it? Uh, He's missed the last two rounds after a really great showing at the Australian Grand Prix support event. And he went reasonably well at Eastern Creek as well. But, uh, returning here at Phillip Island. Right. Quite sure as to what happened with that damage on the front of the car. This has been a good battle though. Faulkner and Ingle. Third and fourth as the oh, right, yeah. minor 10 crew do a bit of uh, <laughs> gardening. <laughs> oh, it's bad luck, but he's behind his innocent party in that one. Yeah, look at the amount of dirt and garbage these things pick up. It's like a shovel. That feeds all the cooling systems for the engine and, in some cases, gearbox differential coolers. So that's tough to for Mark stuff too. out of there. It's tough for Mark too, isn't it? Because he was looking for a good a good round after quite a uh, an unsatisfactory one at Barbagello. And with that good qualifying position of third, he was almost set for a good one. Well, Seaton just dancing around. I think Dick Johnson described it as you've got to have the finesse of a ballet dancer around this place in the wet. Seaton has never really raced this car in wet conditions, so they've sort of guessed at a wet setup on the suspension. He's hanging there in fifth position, but he's a long way behind the Mobile Holden Racing Team Commodores. He's hanging on to Engel, who too is having his first year on Bridgestone. So there's a number of teams here that are effectively doing their testing in public. They're doing their testing at race meetings, and when you've got a team as well set up as the Mobile Operation, you're not going to beat them until you get your act completely together. Well, three guys that are in the top ten have put in an outstanding drive so far. That is Stephen Richards, Paul Radisich and Garth Tander. They have come from, well, Richards was in 16th position, Tander was in 18th and 19th was Radisich. They're now 6th, 7th and 8th. So they've been doing some great driving. And Steve Reed, who is the top privateer, is in ninth position ahead of John Bow. I bet uh, Jeff Gretch is on the, uh, on the radio saying, now, now, you two, what we got going on here? This is a replay of the Jason Bright incident oh, as he runs Jason. wide. I'll get much wider than that, can you? That's at, uh, well, I guess we could call that Greg Murphy corner. That's where Greg went off in 1997 and hit the tyre barrier very hard, but the Pertec Ford has been able to escape there. 
Wright, who had an incident yesterday in qualifying where he went off in the southern loop, but the car didn't sustain too much damage, and he was able to qualify at fourth. But uh, he's not having a very happy first race here today. Well, by Mark Scaife, he leads the way and looks like repeating last year's efforts of winning the opening race. Just have to be so gentle on the throttle that you've got 600 horsepower under your foot, you know, and you can't sort of get, get the ride on it. It's really interesting when you see going through a corner on the in-car camera, you know, the look on someone's face and the... You have to be so quick, you know, because it's so sensitive. The second, you know, you feel the thing stepping out to correct it, etc. And it's, uh, you either like the rain or you hate it. We're just through that the minor 10 Ford of Mark Larkham is out. The radiator has let go. Yeah, they don't like running hot for very long. Highly stressed racing engines. See that lap counter, lap 12 or 15. This race was originally supposed to be 12 laps in distance, but the three laps under the safety car don't count in sprint race formats. So that's why we've increased the race to 15 laps. Well, coming into this round, the score was three and three since the inception of the V8 formula here at Phillip Island. Three round wins for Ford, three for Holden. Oh, look at Down into Siberia, well, yeah. Russell oh. said that he needed a good round and he was going to get aggressive this time. <laughs> this is good stuff between Faulkner and Ingle. He's in the wrong place there though, really, because it's where it's wet, on the wet line. Coming up on, it looks like, uh, Mike Emery and the Sabrek Commodore. The climb up to Lukey Heights, now Faulkner's got a bit of a buffer here. Russell still hanging on to that fifth position, Seaton, or rather fourth, Seaton back in fifth. This is delicate driving, Mark. Yeah, boy, isn't it slippery out there? New surface, absolutely dynamite in dry conditions, but first time the race on in the wet, and uh, you can see the way they're tippy-toeing around. This is an outstanding job by John Faulkner, though. Five seconds, the gap between himself and the mobile Holden Racing Team Commodores. He's trying to catch the leading duo, and he's also copying plenty of pressure. Oh. And Seaton in this battle for third position. Three laps remaining. Ken Faulkner hang on to third here. It'll be a great result for the better electrical team. Russell Ingall is hungry for success. He's had a terrible start to his 1999 campaign. Team trying to come to terms with a new Bridgestone control tire, never having run on one. And they really are having to sort these cars out virtually as they go to East Race Meeting. It's a pretty tough call when you're coming up against this sort of opposition. Concerned, he'll gladly take the 50 points for this race win. He desperately needs them, sitting well back in the championship. He had a uh, pretty much a disastrous round at Barbagello, and Adelaide was pretty pretty ordinary too. Exactly. So I mean, he is well back as the other extreme as his teammate sitting behind him, Craig Lowndes, who comes into this round with a 116 point lead. So you'll see Craig sit there, and uh, Mark will take these points no problem. Mark at 10. Word just through that John Briggs has been black flagged for going too slow on the circuit. Yeah, I saw him limping around at that restart. He was just running down the concrete wall on the inside of the pit, so he's got a mechanical problem of some sort. You saw they saw there the concentration on Russell Engel's uh, face, and then you saw a quick blimp in the mirror to look where Seaton is. Oh, oh look. it's getting a bit tight. <laughs> the rain is getting heavier here, and Glenn Seaton has really picked up the pace. He has closed up nicely on Engel and Faulkner. Still plenty of time for stuff to happen with these guys. Yeah, just watch it. Watch the word. Watch the watch that. Listen. Great 
it's going to be interesting to see if Russell can can hold himself back. <laughs> what do you what do you reckon? Well, he's uh, well, he said to both of us. I know Mark and I have spoken with him. You've spoken with him. He said, uh, I need the points. He's sitting fourth in the championship. He said, it's time to turn things up. So, But at the same time, he's going to keep a cool head because they don't want two wrecked Castrol cars after Larry's accident yesterday. But Faulkner is looking good in third. And oh, this will be a, uh, a great result for Johnny. As you'll notice, it used to always be the Fisher and Pykel, better electrical car. You don't see the first sponsor on the car anymore. But John just showing the door. Nicely. That shows how critical that corner is, doesn't it? Coming yeah. onto the main straight. If you don't get that right, and someone else does, I think he was cream. just out off the, off the sort of grey groove. And look at the rain coming down now. It's really really pelting down. <laughs> oh, oh Neil, no. Carlton. Neil, the new AU. He's debuting this weekend, and it's got significant panel damage in the side. It's pretty sick of him now, I'd say. Yeah. Look at the rain. You can see it on our camera lenses. It is pelting down here at Phillip Island. Well, it's getting worse as the day goes on. The two Mobile One HRT Commodores, though, will bring... Oh, no, no, no Ingle, no Ingle. Ah, Seaton is up into the top three, so Russell has spun down near the southern loop, going down into turn two. Yeah. That's a, this is the Neil Crompton uh, Shell Helix replay. Bottom of screen, there he is, the same Neil. spot as Bright. Ow! Oh, oh. oh nasty. Phillip Island bites home. Well, that's the thing they say when you go off here it is not an easy off right. so to speak it is always right. so dramatic look, 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 you're out on the board it's a single it's the same thing out yeah. on the water as you just sort of um basically sort of understeered come aquaplaned off the circus no, nothing you, you're a passenger there's well, nothing you can do before we went to that replay i just saw a shot of him in the circuit so he's still in the order he's dropped back a few positions thankfully no walls down that part of the circuit and there's no walls in front of these guys. The Mobile One cars are bringing it home.